my father's father was a blacksmith in the mine. Now, my whole family had to do with mining on both sides of my family, my mother's and my father's, but none of them, as far as I know, actually ever went down into the mine. They worked on the surface and industries to do with the mining. So when I heard, I was doing my family history and I heard that my grandfather, my father's father, was a journeyman blacksmith. In my ignorance, I thought it was some kind of a gypsy. And so I thought perhaps they went around sort of camping out and showing people's horses. And then I found out from a friend of mine, he said, a journeyman blacksmith was the most skilled blacksmith that you could get. It meant he did everything. And I said, well, what would they be doing? And he said, well, think in those days, what they were doing is they were making all the tools for the mine. They were maintaining any part that needed replacing on the machinery. And in fact, they were very versatile tradespeople and very, very important in the mine. So that lifted me from being gypsies into being tradesmen. Anyway, uh, he was a mine blacksmith. And I think that the mine that he was is the one at the top of Tucking Mill, if any of you know where that is. And they lived in a house just below it, below the mine. Because most people in those days tried to live as near to their work as they possibly could. Then my other grandfather, he worked at the big mine, which was called Dull Coast. When he worked in the actual mine itself, what he did was collect all the samples of different grades of tin, because it's not all the same grade. And the expensive tin would be obviously paid much more for. And he used to put the tin into little test tubes. And my mother said he used to bring it home to do. Now he was not a qualified geologist or anything like that, but he was doing work that people now would be have to be qualified to do. And he would then get this ready and then that would all be shown to the buyers when they came of what samples of what had come out and so that was how it was priced. Now, as far as I know, although he didn't actually have a trade at it, it was known as tin grading. And probably he didn't get paid half the money that he would have been paid had they employed someone qualified. But nevertheless, he did the work fairly well. Now, I don't know if anyone knows, but tin is mined something after the fashion of gold or the raw tin is taken out of the mine but as the water flows out of the mine which all mines had the water flowing out of them people would set up little industries towards there and the sea to which the stream was flowing and these little industries would extract any tin that was left now they weren't as wealthy of course as the miners but they did make a living i think the old miners must have had like a pan or a big shovel and they would tilt the shovel so that the tin came to a point because the tin was a lot heavier than the rest of the soil. Well, over the years, they developed these huge tables, which were, they had a supply of water going to them which did exactly the same thing as if the men had been dipping a shovel into the stream. So it was rather like gold mining, but it became mechanized. And so that's how they would catch this tin. And then the tin being heavier would separate itself out. They would then collect it and they could sell it to the assayers. And these tables used to be um, down at Gwydion, or one lot of tables, there were several tables in Cornwall, but my grandfather, my mother's father, was a foreman later in life on the tin streams. I'd like you to realise that the stream then was coming out of the mine and it was a an absolute soupy, brick red, thick, and according to how much was coming out of the mine, it would be thicker. And it was just a mess and it used to go to the sea 
And as the tide came in and out, it would still be there. And all across St. Ives Bay, over to Hale, it would be stained red, like a brick, brick, brick red. And if people went in it to swim, you can't imagine now because you go in and it's lovely clean water. People did go in to swim because if people didn't have a lot of money, they would walk down to Gwydion and go there when the tide was in the right place. And all the suits and everything would be covered in this red residue. So no one ever wore a good bathing suit down there because it would get brick red by the time you came out if the tide was that way. Or the wind used to blow it, I think. And I'll tell you where it took place. If you're going up to Cadrivi, on the left-hand side, there's now um, a sand sifter hotel. And then a, further on towards Hale, there is a, a nature reserve for the seabirds. And that used to be the tin streams. And when I was a child, it was a really ugly place. And everything was red with tin. And no one ever went there for holidays like they do now or going to see the sights of that because it wasn't a pretty sight. And so my grandfather used to walk. And if you go in the car from where I live, you realize it's quite a way, but cross country because all the Miners used to use what they call the miners' paths. And my grandfather would walk from Camborne every day. I think they lived in College Row then. And he would walk from the middle of Camborne down to that place every day and back. And the big treat was if they had a friend who had a donkey and shay, because in those days, for the working people, it was a very good thing to own a donkey. And they had these little carts called shays. And of course, the men would jump on this if, if the man consented to give them a lift. They would think they were well done by that day. But other than that, they would walk both ways. Which, when you think, they then came home and did their vegetable gardens, which were always immaculate, and fed the family. and. That was, must have been a very, very long day in the summer. Maybe in the winter they couldn't be doing the vegetables, but they did their vegetables. Every man, that was another pride that people didn't have an unkept garden. Everyone had beautiful vegetable gardens and it was a point of pride as to who had the best garden. Now my explanations have not been technical. They're just things that I could tell you a bit, but I could recommend if you come down to Cornwall on holiday, we've got several places which would take you round and actually show you and go down and see it. Some of you have already done this, but if you haven't, I'm sure you'd have a great time doing it and probably past it at the end.